Okay, there is something gnawing at me, and I have to make a confession, and I think now is the good time to address this. And the thing gnawing at me is this statement right here. And if you look at it, hopefully something but maybe something doesn't bug you about it, but there's something that bugs me about it, at least maybe because I've been doing game programming for a while. And It would be wise for you to pause the video and look at this and see is there anything in here that doesn't seem quite right. In fact, let me try to highlight a, a smaller piece of the code and or a smaller sample. Is there something wrong about this or something, not necessarily wrong, but something that could be done better, so to say? Uh, pause the video and think about it. Okay. You're right. The plus. The plus should be bugging you. At least I hope it bugs you. Why? Because if you think about it, we have this matrix here, this op, and the reason we make this matrix is so that we can rotate our ship. Okay, let me bring the bring the game back up. And the operator allows us to do this. But to actually move these vertices in space, okay? That is done via the plus sign. Now, let's think about it. Why, why can't we just combine both of those operations into one matrix? It'd be nice if I could just say op times vert sub i, and that'll do the rotation, and it will also do the translation. Okay, so that's, that's where we're going now. That's the goal. So, here's a little mental exercise you can do, or an exercise you could do on, on a piece of paper and I suggest you do it. But we have four values here, A, B, C, D, and I could even break these down into basis vectors like this, like so. And if I do that, I should actually do it a little bit more mathematical. So let's do that. It's really going to be V1 in the x direction, or I shouldn't say x, I should say i and j here, but we'll go with x and y. V one y component, okay, and then we have our basis vector v2, an x component, and our basis vector v2's y component. All right, so these are basis vectors, all right, and we've done several videos. We've seen how we can use these basis vectors to rotate around the origin, but in none of these did I show you how to translate. That means, you know, with the example of our ship. Let me just get rid of this, and let me throw some an x, y axis on the screen here. And our ship, our vertices start right here, and right here, and right here. Um, I'll show you how to rotate these because these really are just vectors, even though we draw them as points. They're really just vectors. All right, but pause the video and think, well, what if I want to take these vectors, and, and somehow I want to move the ship. Oh, sorry, I drew that the wrong direction there. I want to move the ship, so I don't have to do the plus in my code. I can just use one matrix to move the ship that way. And and to be honest, remember vectors when we... Well, I'll leave that. I'll leave that for a little later. Pause the video and think, okay, how could we mess with these basis vectors to move our ship like this? So I want to put the move, or the translation as we call it, into the matrix operator. Okay, so pause the video and think about it. Okay, let me show you what I was hesitating on here. Remember, when we apply a matrix to vectors, it applies the vec it applies to the vectors in standard form. That means that their tails are all meeting at the origin. These tails are not meeting at the origin. So there's got to be something I can do with these vectors to this vector will turn into this vector this vector will turn into this vector and this vector will turn into this vector that's the actual result i'm looking for after i apply my matrix okay so maybe maybe you got it maybe you didn't but is there something i can do with a matrix to hit all three of these vectors and have them move like that so then the ship can move around on the screen like we're doing without doing that addition pause the video think about it uh, hopefully you've spent about 10, 20 minutes struggling with this on paper trying to figure it out or else me just giving you the answer will be pretty much useless to your educational experience. But let me tell you, uh, it's impossible. You can't do it with this matrix that we have. This this matrix, yeah, we can 
we can change change these uh, vectors and that's fine but we can't change all of them together to come up with this result the way we have to do that is by entering a third dimension <laughs> does that add any effect to the video I don't know but we can do it with a 2x2 two two matrix. We can rotate, we can scale, and we don't have to scale uniformly. I mean, we can scale more in the X than we do in the Y and vice versa, but I can't move all these vector points like this together. I have to I have to go into the third dimension. I'll explain why later, but for now, let's, let's, uh, let's clean this off here. I'll just clean it all off. All right, we're going to take our original 2x2 two two matrix with our basis vectors in there like so. I'll just draw the brackets for now. But we have the 2 by 2 matrices with the four entries like there. And we're going to expand it, meaning we're going to go three dimensions. So then our matrix, instead of being like this, will be like like this. And then we gain one, two, three, four, five more entries. Okay, we started with four, but if we go three, th Three-dimensional, that's th three times three gives us nine entries. And again, these are uh, nothing really new here. These are, again, basis vectors, except they're three-dimensional basis vectors. Okay, I can span R3, as Khan says in his videos. I'm no longer stuck to a plane or your flat screen. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to render a 3D scene. I'm simply going to this three-dimensional matrix so that I can add translation in. And I'm going to show you how that works in the next series of videos. But that's that's where we're going is we need to do that. Well, now that I've kind of given this away to you, can you think of a way I could use these three basis vectors to move our ship in space as I was trying to do? I, the ro rotation we know is going to be handled by our 2x2, two two, but then how are, how does going 3D help us do our rotation? That's the next question. So I'm going to leave this video at that and uh, in the next video I'm going to talk more about it but I strongly suggest trying to figure this out for yourself and even if you don't succeed at figuring it out on your own at least you're hungry and you're willing and you're more prepared for the answer when I give it to you. So there you go.